Welcome viewers to the Pro Theologist and Pro Brick exclusive YouTube channels. You're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison at Gosford. At Gosford. It's going to get windy here today, 20 to 30 knots. Now I'm not sure what your life story is or where you're up to or how you've got onto this video but what I do want to say to you is no to drugs and alcohol, no to substance abuses, no to medications that aren't prescribed. I'm an advocate of staying straight. I think you need to stay straight because you don't want to alter your mind. That's what this is all about. Mind altering drugs to bring you down, to give the devil his way in your life so that he can take you off track as we look at these ducks. Look at these ducks. very tame you could be going through a breakup by consequence of alcohol substance or medication abuse um, I lost a marriage through medication abuse a relationship I believe through weed abuse I've seen early in my life a lot of people lose their lives through the use of drugs and other substances and most of all I've seen them lose their relationships because women won't tolerate these people who want to abuse themselves with drugs. There's just one group of women that I've noticed that will allow this and these are the ones that do it themselves. So what they'll do is they'll find a person that's into the same abuse, drug abuse or substance abuse and they'll have what's called a um, transactional relationship. You've got yours and I've got mine. But what this does is degenerate, it degenerates the structure, the substructure, the foundation of the relationship. But some of these relationships are actually built on the premise of substance abuse. And somehow or other, these people seem to know how to navigate <laughs> themselves um, under, these, under the influences of these drugs. But I've never once seen a relationship last that's been dependent on drugs. Not once. Never. Never. I have never seen once a relationship last built on the substructure and foundation of drugs or alcohol. How are you, mate? This doesn't work. Does not work. How's the shoulder? You're running really well, like you're moving along. I saw yeah, you coming up there. I always move pretty fast, so it's good to get back to. When are you going again? On Tuesday, so I leave during the week. All the best, eh? Yes, yeah, so I see you. What's your name? Jason. I'm oh, Mike Alana. Yeah, Alana, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jason. I'll see you when we get back. Okay. I'll still be here, Peter Wood. You, you'll be 100% by the time you get back. Yeah, yeah. You've done I a great to, job. I speak to my instructor at home. And he's really good, you know, he'll know what I can do, but he's off with just had surgery on his hand, but he'll probably come in and show me. Because I'm, I'm not allowed to lift anything. Yeah. You don't know how many get weight on my shoulders anyway. But you haven't rested on your laurels. Yeah, good. So I'll see you later. Yeah, have a good time. She uh, injured her shoulder, serious injury to the shoulder, and she's she just has kept at it. And she's come so far. 
And this is what I mean, micro-incremental steps to healing. You can heal. <coughs> you can heal. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So you can heal. There's no issue with that. You can escape drugs. You can escape alcohol. That's not going to be an issue. It's not going to be a problem. It's not going to be a problem. It's something you can do. It's something you should do. Because time won't wait for you. Time's a respecter of no person. Time does not respect any person. Not even the Lord himself. They took him out at the age of around 33. The only thing that he had that we didn't have was the fact that at that point he rose from the dead. Our resurrection will come when he's ready. But he rose from the dead. See, there's a spirit now that's programming people to believe that, and it's been around or for millenniums, but we haven't, haven't learned. There's a, there's a realm of influence, the spiritual realm, a dark realm of influence that people doesn't, don't even know that's working against them. There's principalities and powers assigned to find gateways into people's lives, right? To condition their minds to think that alcohol, drugs, and uh, reckless sex, sex addiction, sex addiction's a big one too, that's destroying people. Um, combine all these together and you get aging. People age. And they die too, before their time. They caught something big up there yesterday, Arvo, oh, these young blokes. Yeah. There's an Aussie fisherman. What are you fishing for? Brimming that? Blackfish? Anyway, keep, keep up the good work. It's going to get really windy today. Yeah, 30 knots. You know, it doesn't hurt to get out and fish. And... It's so simple, but we've complicated it. See, once you start putting alcohol and drugs into your system, you're altering your mind. You're altering yourself. You're disrupting the plan for your life. You're changing the course in which your life should go. And it's serious. I, lo I know people that get up and go to work, they're getting up to go to work just to get the money for their drugs and alcohol. That's all they're doing and their food. Everything else has slipped through their fingers. These people are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. They're never going to change. They're maladaptive functioning addicts, but they're not functioning the way that they should. They're just called functioning addicts by means of a term that says that that's meaning they can come into the community and you can't really tell. But if you've got half your wits about you, you can tell. And you hear of all the stories where they've lost their jobs and all the rest of it. They get booked and they're under the influence of alcohol and wheat. Australian law, man, we don't muck around over here. I challenge you, I challenge if you, you've gotten to the point on this video. Get off the crap and make a life for yourself. It's all because you don't value, you don't value yourself. If you valued yourself the way that you should, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing to yourself and you're affecting the people that are allowing you to come into their lives.
you're taking for granted yourself and you're taking for granted the people that are coming into your life with your covert chameleon way of hiding what you're really doing. You're lying to yourself, thereby you'll lie to others and you're deceiving people, but most of all, you're being left behind. And that's the most horrible feeling anybody could have. The feeling of being left behind. And that's what's happening to these substance abusers. People are, uh, are more educated about it now than ever before. Um, for the most part, society and community and the law has had enough of it. The damage that it does to people and the carnage that it causes in the lives of these people. You see, you haven't resolved anything in life until you've resolved yourself. And what you'll find is a lot of alcoholism and weed abuse and these other recreational drugs and the overuse of medications. These people are dead set pathological, they're psychological, they're beyond narcissists. <clears throat> they're at the mercy of their carnal nature. They've opened themselves up to the complete whole influence of their sinful nature and their sinful nature is just running it for all it can get it's wasting these people's lives now if people are wasting their lives what do you think they're going to do to yours if you get involved with them that's why they say don't get involved with alcoholics or addicts or narcissists or all these pathological types if you can see the little swallows and sparrows flying around there they're beautiful little birds playful playful because they'll rub off on you the Bible says bad company corrupts good character I'll see if I can get a little bit closer for you bad company corrupts good character there they go they're too timid these ones you can't get that close to them but they'll play around and they'll stir you up and dive bomb you and it's so fun um Bad company corrupts good character. There's nothing you can do to change that. It's just what happens. We can't change that. I've had relationships with these ladies that are on medications and weed and alcohol and stuff, and I haven't judged them. <coughs> I've taken it for what it is. And I've gone along and supported them and tried to be a good boy. Not one of them has made it. Not one. Hello, mate. How are you? There's a little French terrier, I think it is. The owner's up here. Um, not one of them has made it because they can't. If you've got your wits about you and you're doing the right thing and you're want to have a successful relationship and you're with somebody that's dilly-dallying around with this crap <coughs> you're not going to make it you're just not going to make it that's all there is to it it's not going to happen it's just not going to happen there you go mate Morning. is that a french one that's a quarter french three quarter bug yeah, because my daughter just bought a um, Boston Terrier. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. more of a slim one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And they've got the floppy ears like that one. Well, this one's ears stand up. Oh, maybe they... No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I noticed yeah, about... Yeah. I was I'm, looking I'm at that... I'm pretty sure the Boston's supposed to have the floppy ears. This bloody thing's got ears like... It might, might be a bit of a crossbred. Well, I don't know, but I mean, the, the Frenchies usually got the pointy ears. Yeah, right. And uh, the so big, I, I mean, I thought they both had pointy, but uh, um, I said to some guy walking, walking his dog, I said, oh, is that a Frenchie? And he said, no, it's a Boston, and they're floppy ears. That's it. Maybe, unless that was a strange one or something like that. Have a good day, mate. Um, the wind's starting to come up out there, further down the bay. So, there are places you can go and counselling you can get and 
things like this, but I think for the most part, from my journey, when I was young and I watched all this, it comes down to a personal revelation within the person themselves. And once they get that revelation and they start to come out of the shadows and the dark, the world's their oyster. I've seen these people turn from um, hating themselves to really taking life by the horns. They just take life by the horns. And then they become evangelists with the message of try and get off, try and get off the, the shit. They call it the shit. There's channels on YouTube that can help you. Heidi Rain, she's in America, but, but I think you can um, correspond with her. There's Put Down the Shovel, very successful YouTube channel to help al alcoholics and drug addicts. You can turn your life around, come back to yourself. It's your choice. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison at Gosford on the Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. If this has helped you, like, share, subscribe. I try and make it interesting. I'd appreciate that. But be aware, there's people out there that are harming themselves and that's always the first indication that they will harm you one way or another. They will harm you. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison again, um, on here for Pro Brick Exclusive and Pro Theologist. Thank you for joining me and bye for now. The Jehovah Witnesses. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. The Jehovah Witnesses. A serially deceived group of people from a um, religion that was founded in America. It's uh, parasited its way around the world. It's a religion run by business. The religion aspect of it is just a front, shop front. It's a place of theological abuse which then spreads its tentacles into child sexual abuse, the practice of lying, the practice of false prophecies, the practice of doctrines that bring death to people, e.g. the blood doctrines. <clears throat> they think the world outside the Jehovah Witness organization is what they describe as mentally diseased. I would argue that. I would say, to some extent, it's the other way around. I think the Jehovah Witnesses, theologically, are definitely in trouble. That's why they're described as a cult, not as a common denominational Christian religion. Their teachings are contrary to the center of the Bible, which is Christ crucified and our faith in him. They actually have got it so messed up, they think Christ is Michael the Archangel. And I, I just don't know how they've come up with that. Because Christ is not Michael the Archangel, he's just not. <sighs> Can't understand how they could even come up with that concept. And I don't want to understand. It's 101, Christ crucified. The Jehovah Witnesses are taught to lie and if they go into three theocratic warfare, they will lie. They call it theocratic warfare, where they'll lie, deliberately lie, to get their point across. Personally, I don't think they should be allowed on the streets or in our communities. I don't think they're safe. I think they're a threat. I think the activities that go on in their kingdom halls, for the most part of it, are corrupted and have nothing to do with Christianity. This then filters through to the other flaws in the organization that go down.
it's a organization where <clears throat> the cognitive dissidence is part of what they rely on because the the members depend on the organization depends on the members believing the lies <clears throat> if they don't believe the lies then they will be shunned and if you're not shunned you'll be disfellowshipped if you're not disfellowshipped you'll at least be sent to the back of the hall until you come back into line that's the manipulative ways of this organization they lie they cheat they scheme they try and control their members they want their money that's for sure the members build kingdom halls and then the watchtower has been selling the kingdom halls by the dozens by the hundreds actually across the world they're trying to transition the organization to a internet based business which will protect them from all the lawsuits that they've got from their members and pedophiles getting access to the children and sexually abusing the children they got court cases all over the world for child sexual abuse when the Australian Royal Commission was on there was a thousand plus cases I encourage you to look up the Australian Royal Commission on YouTube if you doubt what I'm saying where there's truth about what this organization really does and how they act and treat these innocent children. I've seen Jehovah Witnesses in this car park behind me um, after I've confronted them about some basic, simple, foundational Christian truths run out of the car park screaming and yelling. The only way I could describe it would be demonized. They appeared to me to be demonized. What, what I saw was typical of what happened in the Bible when Jesus confronted demons and people were yelling and screaming and frantic. That's how I describe it. That's what I've seen these Jehovah Witnesses do. What frightens me is some of these Jehovah Witnesses run childcare centers um, if you could be a fly on the wall. The, the length they go to with their false prophecies and the damage that it's done to the lives of people is irreparable. They're not the organization that will run up and say, so it's, they won't say sorry, that, that gives it its narcissistic Um, it's narcissistic identification in fact I think it's more psychopathic there's serious issues in that organization that are harming people in massive numbers millions across the world there's people that serve at a place called Bethel and they'll just sack them they've never been you know, they've never been able to build a life for themselves. One of these people is Marcus Vaughan. You'll find him on YouTube, Marcus Vaughan. He's an ex-Bephalite. There's another channel called Kim and Mikey. They're ex-Jehovah Witnesses. These people know this organization for what it is and what it does. And they help people across the world through their YouTube channels. The Jehovah Witnesses their lies, their false prophecies, their deceit and their theological abuse, their child sexual abuse their two witness rule which leaves uh, children at the mercy of uh, pedophiles because if they don't report with another person that's seen what's happened they aren't believed the police should be rung straight away, but they don't do it. There's a shunning policy where people are shunned from their families because they don't 
submit themselves any longer to the Jehovah Witness lies. I've seen videos of 60, 70, 80 year old grandmothers begging their children to let, to see, let them see their grandchildren but they won't do it because they're not subject to the Jehovah Witnesses anymore. They describe how evil and painful and horrible it is for them to be shunned from their families. The Australian Royal Commission goes right into this. <clears throat> I really do advise you to watch the Australian Royal Commission. And the pain and agony that this organisation has caused people now for over a century, as I said, is unfixable. The organisation really does need to be shut down as a religion because it's not, if it is a religion, it's not a Christian one. It can't be because it's just not for its deep-rooted beliefs Christian. It's just not. They've got it all wrong. They've got the Old Testament mixed up with the New Testament and all sorts of you, you, this idea that you can't have a blood transfusion, it's not even in the Bible. It's possible that over 100,000 people have died just from the, the idea that you can't have blood. And these people are running around advertising it. They've got teams in their kingdom halls that will go to the hospital if somebody's reported to possibly need a blood transfusion. They've got, well, I think they're called HLC teams that go in and make sure that the members do not have a blood transfusion. Horrible practices and behaviours that are maiming people and costing people their lives, families, their psychological, mental health. No. Look up everything you can about the beliefs of the Jehovah Witnesses and if you still want to be one you might need some serious help. I'm Reverend Dr J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia for the Jehovah Witnesses that live around here that might be watching this. They know who I am. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.